to our offerings and our seeds of various things and even what we will share briefly. We are praying, O oh God, for favor. Lord, as we talk about relationships, I pray for favor. Let that be destiny help us. Not just brother, it's a girl. All these relationships, there's some people who already established what they need is divine relationships. And as we sow our seeds today, we, we need those divine connections. This ministry needs destiny helpers. Father, today for the first time, I'm asking you, send me destiny helpers. You know, sometimes we go through a lot of even financial burnout. We're asking you, God, even as we sow these seeds today, oh God, we're asking you for destiny helpers. Even financial helpers to help support the work, to help be able to accelerate these dreams. Some of these things you can do them in, in just one day. But sometimes the limitation is the resources. Send us the resources. Send us gifted and skilled people. Today, even our offering is designed specifically for, we, we, we are converting a lot of it to be a seed for this course. That God, oh God, you will give us skilled people. You will give us uh, not less than five instrumentalists for each instrument, oh God. For the saxophone, five people. For the violin, five people. Not less than five. For the drumist, uh, drummers, five people. For the keyboardist, not less than five people. We want oh God, skilled people so that we can bring heaven on earth. So that when some missions are happening in some school, the services can still go on very well. We don't want to create a void that when we are not in the country, uh, that things has to go to a standstill. Give us skilled people. Give us intelligent people. Give us people with the right attitude, the right heart, oh God. You know, Lord, I have been that to my leaders. I have been that for the last 13 years, oh God. I have been dedicated. I have been submissive. I have done the hard work. So I deserve to be given literally what I had and what I was. So send us those skilled people. Send us those people who don't have to be pushed to do a thing. Send us those people who are hungry to pray, who can be able to come here and sacrifice their time to pray from six. Oh God, I ask you, give us this. We worship you and we mark in your name. Those who are streaming online, bless them too. Whatever you're doing here, do it for them. Give us destiny, help us. Get, give this ministry destiny, help us. Destiny, help us. And all the people who you want, all the big people who have been coming here and you want them to come here, we open the doors for them to come. We open the doors for them to come. And we invite them to this place. Let your ministry, let your, let your glory begin to shift in this place. Father, as we share your word with us, we speak a blessing to the offering and the seeds. In Jesus' name. Clap to Jesus. So those goals are yours to go with home and be praying for them. So let's give our offerings for those who are online. Please give to the MPSA number. Currently, we are working on the pay bill. It's going to take a while, but we're going to fix it. But our trustworthy treasurer, Masi, can be able to receive an account very well. Have your seats as we go to the, uh, the final subject. We normally finish our services at 1.30, unless the anointing comes down. Like sometimes it does, every people on the floor, we let them enjoy the glory of God. But for today, it's not the kind of a service where people are, are going to necessarily be speaking in tongues. It's a service where we're going to be talking about love. Uh, it's a relationship Sunday, and, uh, and we want to talk very quickly. We, we, we will make it quick, so please work with us. So I want to, as we give our offerings, if you want to do a pesa, the gentleman will give you the number. If you're online, ask for the number. The people who are managing online will be able to do that. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. What has to be with? Amen. 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 Don't give up on me. It is now my pleasure to invite my sweet wife to join me here. And help me teach this. We're going to do this back to back. Amen. Amen. I want us to finish with the offering so that we can be able to get to the word. Uh, you can send to the Empesa number you'll be given. You will find it on the group. If you're not on the group, you can be added or it can be given to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for those who are supporting. All these resources go to the work and, and it's going to make it easy. So next week, uh, there is a possible meeting uh, of, of trying to... Uh, and I'll be going with uh, Esther, my, uh, our child, she's the church, the church lawyer, amen? amen. <laughs> she's uh, the spirit lawyer, amen? And all of you need her number. 
Amen. Whenever we walk on the road, we just we call her. Amen. And pay her. Amen. Uh, yes, he loves it, the Lord. Why tell you the one? Amen. Yeah. So, so we we should we will be going to see if uh, our contract can be done and all that. Uh, I'm supposed to go for a very big money this week. Uh, I mean, nobody will pay for it. All the things that we have planned, there's no stash of cash somewhere. We do it, everything, even where we are, is by faith. The sound we have bought, the things we have done in less than two years, it's by faith. Where we are going is by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I feel we are pleasing God. Yeah, we are pleasing God, amen? amen. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't die your amen on me. Amen. Yeah. 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 One day, some of you start preaching, you will know why. It's good to encourage the man of God. Just read your response. And if you, you don't care about him, let's go like a man. So, have we finished giving our tithes and offerings? Alright. Very soon we got. Yes. Uh, some, where is our. <coughs> Joshua? Uh, okay. Uh, Furaha. There's some people who were given the envelope, but the email were not picked. We pick from them. Yeah, always go back to the envelope. You check, you check. If you want to pass anything to him, just call him, just see him. He's a trustworthy deacon. Amen. Let's go to the water. Are you ready? Yeah. We're gonna make it short and sweet. Short and sweet. All right. So that next, the next, next time, it's gonna be even sweeter. Amen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever we won't cover today, when, when I declare it's a uh, last Sunday, I will intentionally start sharing from 11, okay? That's my word. And I always keep my word by God's grace. Amen? Amen. Yeah, so so if, we, if, if you feel that, Manze, this was too short, I'm so hungry for this teaching, uh, you will understand. Amen? Amen. 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 Gloria, are you here? Amen. Can I appreciate Gloria? She's been doing my work for That is the Lord telling you you are valuable. Amen. Yeah. I, 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 that's her ministry. I don't tell her what to do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we don't do micromanagement here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Knock yourself out and bless the whole of God. Yeah, that's amazing. And the funny thing is, I was thinking about that. Then I was thinking about a cake. I forgot to tell one of the chefs to what are cake. So we are not in the spirit and we are like, he topic your son. We are. Who is he? Amen. Thank you for helping me do all that. That is your grace. Thank you for those goals. You have grown that chapter. Let me show you what helped me. And me to us. Let this be fun also. Amen. Yes. Okay, smile for Jesus. So today we're talking about love. Her love. His love. The love of God. Love. Interesting word. Amen. And uh, I want you to put your hands together, the Lord, for my sweetheart.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Ah, it's her thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. She makes clothes look good. <laughs> I'm serious. That's, yeah. She is carousketing with great beauty. Amen. She is anointed. Amen. She is one of the few young, young ministers who can lay hands on me. It's not everybody who can lay hands on me. I have to know where to use leaf, which spirit that operates in your life. Are you a fuck? You know, there's a lot of people who are fucks for the Lord. They have hidden themselves in the Lord, but they have a very. Uh, uh, so, so, people who have to lay hands on me I have to trust your heart. I have to trust your heart is not full of fire. She has a very pure heart. Amen? Amen. She's a mother. Sometimes I call her sweetie. Sometimes I call her darling. Baby is the easiest name to call her. But sometimes I even call her mom. Because sometimes she's a mother to me also. Especially because I grew up motherless. That I had a mother. You know, you can be a mother, but you, you know, being a mother and being a mama are different. A mother is a woman who biologically can get children. But for you to become a mom, it means you have a relationship with your children and you know what you're doing. You're not doing what you don't know. So she has a very motherly heart, and she really means this to me, strength. Uh, one of the prophecies that came when, during our wedding day, if you had attended, and around 2, 2, 2 17 there, p.m. when they were praying for us, if you were not thinking about lunch, you may have heard the prophecy from Pastor Gidenji saying, the Lord has brought you together for the purpose of strength. And we had not told Presbyter that, but God had told me individually that, and Carol individually that. And God told me uh, that Carol is, Carol to me is not a kind of a woman, and I'm, I'm not flattering, I'm just saying the realities. We, you will never find us in a picture where we're standing like this. <laughs> or, or why we're standing, I, I don't have all those pictures. <laughs> You, you will never find us. We don't have such a picture at home. All our pictures are always something like this. Because this has purpose. God told me, Carol is not to come and necessarily help me. I want you to catch this. Because this has a purpose inside what we are going to share shortly, briefly, like a lightning. Uh, God told me that uh, everything God has called me to do I prophesied this to her before I knew she was my wife. That was one of the crazy things that has ever happened to me. Because me, me, I've gone to Nimenda Shule Awana. And I graduated with flying colors. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you are dropouts from Shule Awana. Some of you keep avoiding it. You're like me, I'm an entrepreneur. You understand those people? <laughs> They don't want to go to school, they're like, ah, me, I'm an entrepreneur. There's not, I'm also an entrepreneur, but please respect books, amen? Yeah. So, okay, uh, you become very meticulous with what God tells you. You don't prophesy for yourself. There's some people who misuse the gifts that they don't even have. Think about what I just said. They will invent a gift they don't even have. Just to build a brand for themselves. Am I talking to leaders? Yeah. I don't. I don't think God can use you. Oh, this is heavy. Holy Spirit, why are you doing this to me? I don't think God can use you to prophesy to somebody about their future if you have not had moments where. The Lord kept you awake the whole night to pray for certain people, and they will never know. So some of these people who don't pray for people, but they have a word for you, don't trust them. If you do that, I won't trust you. <laughs> anyway, I'm joking. <laughs> but I'm serious. Amen. Please, Lord. Are you understanding? Yeah. So, Kashule Abuana is where you learn 
to only speak specific what God tells you. You may wonder how do I learn? When you learn, you will know you had you have learned. I remember when I was a young minister, I would go to minister to people, and God would give me a word, and I would get excited. I will add a bit of my own feelings. But God started dealing with me. It was, when I was a young preacher, I'm talking about like back in 206, you know, 205 especially, 204. And God would tell me, there's a time, several times God really humiliated me. He told me, oh, you have to go back and tell her that from here to here it is the Lord, from here to here it is you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was not funny. Because I, 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 I was really convinced I had achieved some fleshly mileage. Say, I will. Am I talking to leaders? Yeah. So I went and I said that and I tear dropped him. <laughs> and uh, there's a time, you remember I told you this story? How, how I pray to God that I'll be having moments where I can know what the king is doing in his house. Yeah. You remember that prayer and the testimony that followed it? Yeah. 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 I don't know which recording it is if you have never had go listen to one of them. Uh, that came when I, I had prayed that to God and God told me, I'm going to work on you for three years. And I thought, all the things I've gone through, God has worked on me. I was like, God, why? You understand? You praise the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and uh, through that journey, because you see, this is interfering with something we were sharing with Carl. It was so powerful. Our fellowship in Ishika, that I was demonstrating what I'm preaching <laughs> in the house, and we are two of us. So it was very interesting. I don't want to share more, but that is, that is for later day. But, uh, but let me tell you, salvation is free. But the anointing, you pay a premium for it. You pay a premium for it. And one of the reasons you have to pay a price for it is so that the price you pay for it causes you to value it. You won't be careless yeah. like with the container. Because yeah. the devil will always attack the container. He won't attack the anointing. He will attack the container. So you'll be able as a brother to keep your zip up, to keep your brains well organized. You won't misuse the influence God gives you to enrich thyself. Come on now. Because you have paid a price for it. And you are able finally to make it to heaven. Because what shall a man gain if you become the greatest minister? Then you end up to be the one making the demons celebrate hell. They are like, celebrate devils. You know they're there. Because they are, yes, they are seeing you there. Praise the Lord. So one time when we were dating, uh, no, before I even knew when she was just my daughter, like everybody else was, uh, of course there were sons. The Lord gave me a word for her, and I, and I was just praying for people during the Kesha. And when I reached her, the Lord told me this. I didn't even know the next one, so I was just uttering what the Lord is saying. And after that, I was like, that was crazy. You know, when you prophesy something and you're like, that's crazy. Amen. Then I continued. It didn't even make sense. But when I laid hands on her, this is what the Lord said. You are the female exact copy of Anderson. Everything that God has called Anderson to do, you're called to do. Everything he is capable of doing, you're capable of doing. Every gift he has, you have. As he flows in the prophetic, you flow in the prophetic. Guess what? Do you know how long you have taken for God to come out that? I know Vlad, right? <laughs> but I know mom was like, no, Vlad, I'm going to be married. I'm going to be married. Anyway, praise the Lord. John Dass has to come to our house to confirm that word. The other day. Wow. But let me tell you something. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because God, God spoke very clearly that she operates in the prophetic and blah, 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 blah. And then she was like, oh, yes, oh, yes. I'm like, again? You are now shaking, yeah? Why <laughs> 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 do you guys do that? I think I need, I need more expensive suits or something. What's up? This is not bad. 
of the accent. Okay. That's his Lord. This is the word from the Lord. As I'm thinking about Atlanta, I may be so, so the Lord, the word of God came heavily. I prophesied of her, I never knew what it meant. Then when God told me it's her, it was a serious uh, challenge because I'd gone through a lot of warfare in the, in the church and I told God, well, I remember telling God this, that God, you just don't like me. You know how much warfare I've been going through in the church? Then you want me to marry my daughter? I'll be the dog of the town. You know, you know how selfish we can be sometimes. Uh, like, yeah. Some of you know the challenge we were going through ministerial. So I really begged God. Uh, and I was like, and I was just fearing because I had gone through so much. And God told me she's the one. And don't propose to her until December. Not even in January. And that messed me up because if you know something about me, me, I don't like surprises. If you surprise me, I'll surprise you back. I'm serious. So just, just even if you want to buy me a gift, ask me about the gift. I want to buy you a book, and I'll help you. Surprise me, because I'm very specific. I'm, I'm big, real, and I know that she's also like that. Amen. Amen. Are you enjoying? Yeah. So what happened was the. Uh, let me cut the story short. Praise the Lord. So through when God revealed that to us, uh, uh, to me, it was generally, I told God, you know my fear, I've, I've grown up with broken, from, from, uh, my background is broken family, and my marriage can fail. Not because I have something to prove, but because I personally am tired. I'm tired. Anyone tired of chaos? I'm tired of chaos. I'm tired, and I don't want, I don't want chaos. I don't, want, I don't want somebody where I have to raise my voice. I don't want arguments. I got no time for that. And there's so much to be done. We don't have time to waste arguing, struggling, wondering, are you cheating on me? Am I cheating on you? Where is the money? Where did the money go? Who is the money? What is yours? What is mine? But, you know, that kind of nonsense. I was like, Lord, you know me. I ain't got time for that. And I told God, and you know me, if you can't work, you can't work. So please, you, got, you, have, you have to know what you're doing. So I demanded confirmations that I thought the Lord cannot get. He met all of them and surpassed them. I'm serious. We're already talking about relationships. Come on now. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. He met all of them. Because there is something called the will of God. There's a verse that says, do not, do not conform to the pattern of. Wow. That is in the book of Romans. 12 2. Anyone who has it? Maybe can read it really for us. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed. So so the, the first demand is that you be transformed. Why is it important that you find the will of God for your life? Not just in marriage, but in every area. Because in the will of God, it, you do not require muscle. When you're flowing the will of God, amen, you are flowing in your element. Ah, did you get it? Yeah. Just like fish doesn't struggle to swim. You won't struggle if you're in the will of God. Amen. God has provided everything your life needs for your life, but it has been inserted in the will of God. So if you do not find it, you don't find what you're looking for. I've already preached. You can process that with an American accent. You know what I mean? You can, <laughs> meaning you take it serious as if we have an apostle from Atlanta, Georgia. Hallelujah. Yeah. It will bless you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise it. Uh, you can read for us. Here it is. Do not. Let's say something else. Do not conform to the pattern of this world by you transformed by the renewing of your mind 
then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, for some of you who are hearing this for the first time, there is something called God's will. God does not just want you to marry anyone. There is somebody who wants you to be able to be married to, or to start life with. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, and, and let, we're going to start with good news, and then we, we're going to do this back to back. I've, I've built a foundation. Uh, we will tell you some of the confirmations later, amen, just to inspire you. But I just wanted you to know the Lord can give those confirmations. We are not special. Amen. amen. If you want clarification, He can give it to you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you're already in a relationship, this is also for you. If you're not in a relationship, this is also for you. The first miracle Jesus did was at Cana of Galilee. He did a miracle in a wedding. Where? Okay. And the weddings of those days, you know that time, life was slow. Life was very slow. So, so the bash used to run for even seven days. It was like a seven days wedding. I know today in Mombasa, most weddings are done for three days. I used to work in Mombasa, three days straight. But that time it used to go even seven days minimum. And Jesus was there. And Jesus was not there praying in tongues. Judging people being spiritual, like some of you, like a shindy, shindy. No, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> <was> there dancing. <laughs> he was, he was dropping it. You understand what I'm saying? Even when they were talking to him, he was like, "Yeah, this is my jam." You understand what I'm saying? I used to listen to it in heaven. You know, praise the Lord. Yeah. And they're like, "I'm sad, Jesus, stop dancing." You understand? Are you understanding? Yeah. What, what do you think Jesus was doing? <laughs> You know, some of you do not see the humanity of Jesus and the personality of Jesus. That's why some of you, you are too holy that Jesus is investigating you. He's <laughs> like, ah, we found this holiness. It's very rare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is competing with my holiness. Because you are is out of touch with this world. Meaning it can only help anyone. Sarah. <laughs> And Sela is not a Kikuyu label. <laughs> Sela means <laughs> post and think about what I'm just saying. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? So, so the first miracle he did, praise the Lord. Amen. That is your responsibility. Yes. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Otherwise you may miss your visitation. Are, are you understanding? Yeah. Jesus, the first miracle he did was in a wedding. And it was not a coincidence that the miracle he did was that it had run out of wine. Then he turned water into wine. Why wine? The concept is this. If Jesus is involved from the beginning, he will bring taste Whoa. to your life. If he is involved, from the genesis of your life, your life will have taste. There is marriages and relationships that have run out of wine. They have no taste anymore. Just because someone has been married for eight to four years does not mean, praise the actually if you find them sure. But uh, it does not mean that they are enjoying their marriage. There is there is there is marriage and enjoying it. So, so they're surprised. I always delay clapping for people who have been married 40 years because my head always goes like, or 50 years or 100 years or seven years like us, because my head is like, what kind of seven years have they been? Nah, come on now. Because I, I don't know about you, I, I also prefer quality. Wow, praise the Lord. Quality than quantity. Come on now. Some of you, you're competing with people who are miserable. You're in a hurry to be married, and you join people who are miserable, but they don't tell you they're miserable. Yeah. And, 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 and because they hate you, they actually want you to be married so that you can join them. They're hoping you become also miserable like that. So they keep telling you to be married. Disclaimer number one, so that you... This, this part is called meeting the Andersons. Say meeting the Andersons. Meeting the Andersons. All right. One thing we will never know, what, one thing I want you to know about us, no matter how sound we are in God by, by His grace, we will never tell you who your wife or husband is. 
So for all of you who have been hoping, I whisper something, eh, James, eh, Kimani, eh, Mwakiwa Makara. No, no, no. We don't do that. We don't do, I know there's some churches where they, they, they pair people together, they recommend, we will never do that. It doesn't matter how closely you follow us. That will not draw. And by the way, let me back it up and tell you the fact. There's so many people God has told us who they should be married to. But that is for us to pray. It's not for us to advise. And if you are a beneficiary of us telling you a confirmation, it's always after you have told us your minimum five, seven confirmations already. We cannot, we intentionally refuse to be your primary confirmation. I will not, I see Taki your chair. <laughs> I don't want it. I know there's some people who are hungry for that position. We always be mentioning, no, when we are meeting, actually, God used Jesse, and Jesse came and said, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> I know he doesn't do that. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. We don't do that. So it's good it gets out there. We don't also pair people because we know the danger of that. Because we know one of the ways you cannot do, you cannot trust your heart to determine if you'll be able to marry a certain person or a certain person should marry a certain person. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. And I'm, I want to ask Carol to say something because I know she's getting distracted. But I know she didn't want to leave. Amen. But that's what the Lord was telling her to do. Amen. <laughs> uh, on this part, we don't tell people. Why don't we tell people? Because we don't want to be the primary reason why you got married. We refuse. Whether we know it or not, we will not tell you. I don't know if you the whole night on my journey, you book and say, Yeah, no, I will not say it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because yeah. the day where the rubber meets the road, we don't want also to be the person. Yeah. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. We don't want that glory. We, are not, we don't have no self esteem. God has healed us. We don't like we want to feel powerful. We are the one who joined the Jewy Alice and Jew Dr. Jewy. No, no, we don't want to do that. You, 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 we will teach you to hear God. You hear God for yourself. Confirmations are yours. And guess what? Doesn't matter who we would prefer you to be married to or we think you should be married by. That is null and void when it comes to your life. We refuse to feel or to believe that we have the, 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 that level of superiority to be able to fathom one's purpose from start to the end. We do not have that, and we will not take that. Because there will be a day. And, and all of you leaders, if you ever get a direction for who should marry somebody, please, please, shut up. Don't tell them. I'm just giving you wisdom. Never do that. Never, never do that. Even if it's God. Even if you see them being engaged, they're like, I knew it. Just shut up. Don't, don't interfere with that. That's a dimension that none of us should interfere with. For us, we wait for one word. For me to be able to begin to guide you, we wait for one word. I believe it's the will of God. The Lord spoke to me. When you tell me that, there's nothing I can do. Because I can never interfere between what you think you have heard from God and what I think. And I will sacrifice what I think myself or what God will be. Not yours. I'll believe you. And I'll start supporting you as God. As God has spoken to you. To you. You. Because it is you who is somebody in the house. You get the, it's not me. That's why I don't want to do that. And, and, and also, you may not be called to stay in this church forever. You will maybe hear some of the people that have helped the most are the ones who sometimes tell you the, the things you don't expect. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Tell you the Lord talked to me yesterday to go to SDA. Ah, but at home, I release you. And I'm over Baraka, then I'm like, do you have fear? Praise the Lord. And we bless them. So, so imagine if I am the one who connected you, then you married each other. You know what I'm saying? So my God, I'm praising the Lord. Why did you say that? So if both of you marry, praise the Lord. Nagasiyako ni vyombo ni zimekuwa drums. You know that zuvulia ni drums. And then you move on with life. I don't want to get the backlash 
of what happened to you. And I also believe no minister should do that. Any minister that does that is not ready yet. They need to, to go back to the school of the Lord. That is a responsibility no one should get. In rare times, can God really the prophetic come out to help somebody? But even that is to help what is already there. So somebody was already aware and they were begging God for clarity. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But they knew. They had a primary word for themselves. Because the will of God does not guarantee that you will not be to have challenges. I want you to catch this very clearly. Because some of you are like, and there's so many Christians, all they want, mommy, is the will of God. Then they go back to their laziness and they go through what we call a shipwreck. The will of God is simply insurance. When I buy insurance for my car, it does not mean my car can't get hit. It just means, in case it gets hit, it can recover. As simple as that. So, so after the will of God, there is serious work to be done. So marriage work, if you work. So the first thing you should examine, because the next stage after knowing the will of God is quoting right. The first thing you should examine is, is your partner willing to work with you? Uh, if he's not willing or she's not willing to work to make what you envisioned together, uh, your toast. Whatever toast it is to you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, clap to Jesus as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, in Love Sunday, mm -hmm. we share a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But to end up with Malaysia, to talk a bit about love. Yeah. And uh, we hope you'll be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, uh, well, I remember there's a time we can chat. What is love? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What is love? Mm. 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 Alejandro. Mm. <laughs> so what is love? Na kuna ingine ni leona advert kionchana kwa TV kuna a guy and a good and a motorbike, and two evil of a shades. I could not stand a canadian. So, I'm going to say, 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 so, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 4 to 8. Not only here, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Praise the Lord. Amen. So even as we talk about love, as we share about love, as, to not celebrate, as we are celebrating the love, mm. let us, that is the love we are talking about. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember the first time I remember? I remember the first time we came across this this verse. We call me so ma this this uh to it was the brochure as our to a Jehovah witness. So I love reading. Now I'll come a good kaba. It's a young people na nini. So you can only about what is love and lust. Okay. So uh, that's where that's the first time I came across mm -hmm. that this verse about love. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, okay. Interesting. So I call it a side here, thanks to Jehovah. So I'm going to So it also is an encouragement when you are in that evangelism. Yes. Those those 
They are not in vain. Praise the Lord. That is what is going to transform their lives. Maybe I was suicidal. I was tired with life. And a verse there can give them strength. So, si choke, si fiki ati ni sa evangelism, o mesha hepa. Chile kwa hivu yevu ni kalani. Now, you going there to minister, it can save someone's life. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, so the last thing I want you also to understand, thank you for defining love, uh, but we can take it even a, a bit further, uh, even though we don't have to, oh, my notes are here. <laughs> All right, we can share, I want you as amen. Uh, I don't want to ask questions, but let me tell you this, love is an act of the will, followed by an emotion. Can you say that? Love is an act of the will, followed by an emotion. That's why it is possible to marry the will of God. Because love is first of all a choice, followed by an emotion. So it's very important to know that. The will of God has nothing to do with sunglasses, masculine ma uh, body, fantastic physique, wavy hair. Praise the Lord. Some of you are like, continue, I need to know how to write messages. <laughs> You're in the wrong meeting. <laughs> Love is an act of the will followed by an emotion. It is first of all, so, so when you say uh, I have a crush, a crush is closer to lust than love. If you meet a guy and you have never seen him, all your life. And all of a sudden, you're like a German servant with its owner. <laughs> you know? So, so, something is wrong with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Love is an act of death, followed by Annie. All right, all right. With that definition now, you begin to, because there's a lot of people, there's a, there's a couple that came to me, uh, not a couple, a young person, and told me, I'm in love, I'm burning, I just love this girl, I love, I love, I love. <laughs> Two different instances. And there was another time my girl came and said, I'm in love, I love this girl, what do I do, what do I do? I, and the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to ask them, Oh, you're in love, yeah. So you can constitute cost of love, yeah. So you're so much in love that all you want is this person, yeah. Now you get me. I told them I don't. So I asked them a question. What is love? They could not define what they were talking about. So I asked them, if you don't know what love is, how do you know what you're into? Praise the Lord. That's why I've told you it's an act of the will. So you cannot be in love without the concept of your will. No, you must have at a particular stage made a decision of all the people in life to love this one. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it is first of all a, a, an act of the way. It's a decision followed by an emotion. So it is being followed by an emotion. Now, when you when uh, when the Lord reveals to you who your future person is. Assuming all of you get really uh, interested with marrying the will of God or facilitating uh, the will of God or, or perfecting, because God is also a God who can bring taste. Because Jesus went to a wedding. Amen? Amen. Are you understanding? Yeah. So if already the, the wedding has already taken place, we can invite God to bring taste. So whether it were, you knew it was the will of God or not, the Bible says that uh, where there was ignorance, the grace of God overlooked. Yeah. So, so, so if you are already you are already married, perhaps, and we don't know, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and you did know when you were married. Even this message is for you, because you can be able now to make make the best of what God has allowed you to have. So your prayer is not is it the will of God? No, 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 no. Your prayer is what can I do? To make the best with what God has brought to my life. How do I bring wine? Hallelujah. Amen. To this marriage. How do I bring taste? So if it's an act of the will, 
That means it's possible to love. Why? Why is it an act of the will? Because you can love anyone. You can love anyone. When you say my type, you, you have heard that about my type? My type is simply a programming that has come to your head through your life experiences. Your type is literally what life. Some of you, if you were, because you were born in town, some of the ladies, can, can I have, uh, let's make it interactive. Uh, yes, uh, oh, oh, yeah, tell, tell me your type. Some ladies. Let's, how many ladies, uh, you can make some noise, Ooh, if I mention something. How many ladies like uh, tall guys with shoulders that are broad? <laughs> I said ladies. Oh, it's only one. Betty, may the Lord hear your prayers. You understand what I'm saying? How many, how many love men that, uh, that have uh, beards? Yeah. All right, how many love men that don't have beards because they never grow old? Ooh, six people. <laughs> how, how, how many love men with a big grip for hands? Big grip, they have big hands. How many love men with baby hands? <laughs> Alright, this is fun. Alright. Alright. Alright, let me try and define something. But your 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 script is not honest. I, I, I sense I sense it's, it's fake. Maybe somebody is trying to score some points somewhere. I don't know. Who knows? Praise the Lord. All right, but uh, how many ladies, this makes sense? A dude that is riding a motorcycle with a, with a leather jacket and a bling, silver, not gold silver, with a, with, a, with a stopwatch and with a very fine, uh, you know, very cool and uh, ripped jeans and, and uh, military boots kind of, you know, you know with a toned bass, you know. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who smiles before they speak? All yeah. those gentlemen who are like, hi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How, how many ladies uh, feel that? All right, all right. Let, let me now come to it. That is not your, it is your type because life told you that's your type. All that person has been assembled through life. I'm telling you, these ladies who are here, the ideal man has actually a katam. Because the first, because one time they were watching Indian movie, and there's this guy with katambi who is beating boys senseless. And he's like, it's so cool. Then another pan, de pan, de pan, de pan, de pan. You know, they watch that, and, and your program in your head said, that is cool. Yeah. And, and they register to their head, I love Katambi. <laughs> some of you don't know, some of you are getting an aha moment. They're like, well, maybe Katambi, you don't have Katambi. You know that? You in class four. Some of you, praise the Lord. Some of, I'm very serious. Some of you, you, your type is fake. It is not original. It's not something you were born with. And you're like, my spirit prefers six pack. No! You saw the, 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 you remember the fresh fry advert? And you're like, just, oh, oh, I'm a sata. I'm a sata. You know, they're like, oh, sir, I don't mind six pack. Hallelujah. Hmm? Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? You saw somebody with broad shoulders? Uh, I know, I know Marvel messed for men in Kenya. Because there comes though. But you understand? I know the ladies want though. Chris Hemsworth. I know football master for men. There comes Christian Ronaldo. And, 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 and they're like, I want some of the ribs. Sorry. No, let us say, I want to kill you in the night. And I talk Christian Ronaldo. No, no, where are you? Like a big win. Can you match your prayers? Match your prayers. Match your prayers, please. Praise the Lord. 
But anywho, anywho, but you know, I really, as fast as we go, we do so much because some people come and tell me you pray for my husband, and when they begin to define, I don't even ask those questions anymore. The person they're defining, we just look at each other in color, we are like, okay. We don't want to hurt you, but we, we want to burst with laughter because, can you match your prayer request? <laughs> Because the first, there's some sisters who came to me and the things they wanted me to pray for. The man they defined, I told them, I know that man. They are like, kick, kick, kick. I told them, I can tell you who he is. And I told them, that is Jesus. You have just explained Jesus. There's no man who is like that. Those features, all those things, oh yes. And they were so disappointed. <laughs> so I told them, it means you already have what you're looking for. Go and redefine what you're looking for. So, my type is an enemy to God's will. There's so many ladies who hit their 35, 39, 56. And I know, and I know in this type of feminist movement, some of these things are tricky to say because they're like, well, this is what a man, what a man can do, a woman can do any even better. No, I don't believe in that nonsense. A woman cannot do what a man can do. There's no competition between a man and a woman. There's no competition. I, I don't believe in that. Yeah. A woman can do what a woman can do. And a man can do, can do what a man can do, created to do. There's no competition. We are powerfully different. We are, we are gifted differently. And we, we men, we must respect. I don't want Carol to be like a man. What a lot. But I need church like the way a lady should be. Because the baby walks strong. You know what she does, you know? Imagine a queen wakiti. What else can I do for you? I'll be depressed. You understand what I'm saying? I'll be depressed. I do not, there's no competition. I want you to know our state. I don't believe in this feminist movement. Huh? I believe in empowering women to become the best they can. And I'm doing that starting with my wife. You understand what I'm saying? I have, I've been taking care of her, I've really supported her, and I'll continue to do that. She's a CEO, she's a, a lot of things, she does a lot, she's running her own stuff, and I'm supporting her. I'm, I'm also a board member in her company. Yeah. Not to tell her what to do, but to submit under her and give her advice from my experience. And I've been telling her, I will keep pushing you until the day you're winning awards, and I'm sitting at the corner just watching you do it. Watching you do it, I'll be like, that's my girl. <laughs> She's killing it. That's my position. But whatsoever, I don't want to be like her. And I don't want her to be me. Now, Muliza, yes, you're my miracle. You're going to go poor. Why are you talking like that? What a man can do, a woman can do also. You're crazy. You know what I'm saying? That has caused women to abandon their lane of celebrating a woman and they have joined men. And men are already give. do you know how hard it is to be a man? Men have been giving up on being a man. <laughs> <laughs> and women, are, and, and that's why men are not arguing. They're like, chukwa, chukwa, you give what I meant to share. <laughs> men are committing suicide because they are men. Now, check the rates. 80% of the people who commit suicide, they are men. 80%, actually 95% of the people in prison, they are men. We have prisons in this nation. On the women's side, there's nobody. True story. The men's side, yeah. True story. I'm not joking. These are real numbers. Some of you are like, Lord, where are our men? Where are we single? Back to prison. Praise the Lord. Join the prison ministry, sister. Mama, <laughs> As I close, <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Being a man is hard. Being a man is hard. Because the moment you are a man, the first thing you lose is an element of love. If I was to break down what love is, I've told you it's an act of the 
followed by an A? If you were to go further to begin to, to, to break it down, what are the ingredients that are inside love? A few things I can speak to you. I can say the things that Kono has said. Kindness is in it. Yeah. Generosity is in it. Yeah. Uh, are we together? Yeah. All those things, love is kind, love is patient. Uh, all those things are ingredients of what love is. I can even take it farther and take it to science and tell you that inside love we have sympathy. Inside love we have sympathy. Sympathy is an item of love. There is time, Brian, where your wife will not want you to do anything other than be sympathetic. And if you are broke of sympathy, you will have a problem. So you have to also have sympathy in your pocket. Because sometimes you will just tell you, hey, mess it up, mess it up, kill me, awful, client, and you're going to say, la, la, She does not want you at your house in What a woman can do, I can also do. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't Men is you. Yeah. No, 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 no. That time she just wants a hug and say, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. Okay, this is tough. And all of a sudden she'll be like, I got this. Okay, I touch you with your child. And you're like, you just said you're suicidal. You know? <laughs> ah, come on. Am I helping somebody? Else? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So inside the ingredient of, of, of love, I can show you, I can pull out sympathy or apathy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let me tell you, when you are a man, the first item of love you lose is sympathy. As Karo can walk ahead of us with the Dr. Ian. Dr. Ian, Ajikoye. <laughs> then after five minutes, you do the same. Because you roll, but you are okay. You will notice that the society will respond differently. For her, they will say, Oh my goodness, Kai Mami Paula. They have a name for, even for her now. Now she's Mami. Oh Mami Paula. And there will be like five people competing to help her. Of course, three of them will have funny agenda, but uh, there will be people there trying to help her, ladies trying to cover her nakedness. You understand what I'm saying? Uyu hata kilo mara kumi, mushipi, toke, toke, aguke, zulodi yaze kutole munga. There will be people asking, Niki uyu! Niki! Some people want to beat you. What's wrong with this one? Is it true? Yeah, yeah just go and try. Sometimes there was a time I was in the market. Kikapu yangu ya gatika. I was doing shopping for Gara. We took a roll. No, 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 but I've seen ladies, what do I do? I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go to to go to the bar. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go to the bar. to to it is so simple. As a man, you can do this experiment the day you get bored to plan and you don't know what to do. I did just see in, in town and for five minutes say, uh, oh, please miss idea, please miss idea. <laughs> <laughs> at, 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 at a post child, we will tell you what they are about to do because I don't know. Meaning, this is psychology for I'm not offering it anything. If people begin to approach you this way, they have nothing for you. But for me, they then do it after uh, you, 10 minutes. For her, 2 minutes. For the guy, he said, yeah, turn up, my sponsor. I'm not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Who are you going to do it? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It will be so short. 
Yes, yes, yes. 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 And, and I love anyone who operates with less expectation, it's a blessing. It's got the law of being under expected. Because men, you, you are expected to do so much, so when you do it, it is actually normal. That's why we do not get anyone uh, celebrating us. So, so when we do what we do, we are good men, good fathers. Father's Day, in the Dagama, Subaru. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But then, every Nikola message of Father's Day, what will happen? I'll go into Mia three days after. Happy belated Father's Day, happy belated Father's Day, happy belated Father's Day. Do you understand? I don't know if you're going to release the dad. New Father's Day? No, I'm going to say, okay, happy Father's Day. And I'm like, but for Carol, this last year I think Tasha brought her a gift to you. Who else? And I'm looking at her, I'm like, let me just die preach. Not that baby who could have preached, I didn't really have a book. You know, I'm not going to do a book. I'm not going to do a I'm not sweating. Okay, you think so? No, you don't want me to sweat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's cool. Amen. You know, it's an example. I'm telling you that it's tough being a man. So don't try. Women, you're gifted differently. Don't leave your lane. What you can do is marvelous. It's amazing. How you carry nine months baby. For nine months, then you go and deliver. That is just magic. That's just a miracle. Is a married couple, they are co-creators with God. But in that position of being a co-creator with God, the woman is the CEO. And you're like, I want to do what a man can do. Oh, no, you're losing more power. Praise the Lord. Because yes, you are the neck. Praise the Lord. And man is the head for the sake of order. But you know the head can only think as long as there is enough oxygen supply from the neck. So you cut the oxygen, trying to be the neck, head. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the head is responsible for direction. How many ladies want that pressure? To be responsible for giving your family direction. And, and means, it means, direction means, when the enemy comes, they should deal with you first. So as ladies, when you want to be the head, what you're telling the devil is, you know that prayer I pray, a very dangerous prayer, that has put me in a lot of trouble, but sometimes I pray for people that prayer, especially during warfare, even for my wife, before we, those are some of the things we'll teach you, if you listen. You understand? There's times where there is warfare that I have even to pray for specific people, and there's even a time I pray for you like that, that Satan, I come before you and between you and Sonia, and I stand there. For you to touch her life, you have to touch me. Uh, and, and by the way, it's not funny. I pray those prayers and I get sick, things happen, and I know what is happening. But I take it so that you're back. All right. I was looking for stories until you come. You know what I'm saying? Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you say you are the head, you're telling the devil, I'm standing here, come deal with me before you reach my husband. The man, the women who do that, they always petite. Anaconda, 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 anaconda. Keep it up, hey. Anaconda, you know, I don't 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 know, it's really tough. If Carol today comes and tells me, do you know how many times I can't, uh, the time to time she does this, I, can't, I think we should do this, 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 this. I always surprise her. She's here, she can tell you the truth. I tell her, let's do exactly what you have said. 
I even sometimes call uh, if it's somebody that needs to be called, and she's like, no, see, I like I even turn up. How many times have you done that? Many times, right? Because as men, we can't wait for you to try and try to take the lead. Chukua, keep your life. Yeah, so I'm not saying that again uh, we cannot work together. So what I was telling you is the reason even in our pictures we stand this way is because we're not uh, I, uh, for our marriage. I know other people is a different story. Amen. Uh, we are, God brought us together for the purpose of strength. Uh, come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So let me tell you something. In the Bible, uh, open this story for me. God, God did not invent loneliness. Did you hear that? Yeah. The number one reason why people rush to get in a relationship or to have company is loneliness. When that brother is breaking the egg, collects a baby in a big case. So when he is sleeping and the cold eggs are swimming down his throat, is there a word like, I didn't suffer you can fly those? So majority of people marry because of loneliness. It's one of the driving forces. First of all, it's good you know the good news that God did not invent it. Ah, come on now. God's preference, this, this, is a, this is very important for you to learn this. Let me make this statement. God wants you to have somebody, Carol, than you even want for yourself. Can you say that? God wants me to have somebody, God wants me to have somebody. than I even want for myself. <laughs> Genesis 2.21 says, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep. Amen. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. It was a, it was a rib. One of the unique features about ribs, uh, ribs uh, contain, a, uh, I'm forgetting the scientific word, contain, a, they are able to, to, to grow back. Are you understanding? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you guys call that in medical field. You understand? They're able to regenerate. It is one of the unique features of bones. So, so it's not like God removes the rib and it's missing. And I've seen young men say, hey, he talk as you have to. It, it is nothing missing. It grew back. Because God is not in the business of making things incomplete. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The reason God went to man, because for the man, he went to the dust. But God could not go back to dust because he had already created man in his image and he wanted to pull from the image that he was already. So both man and woman, we are the image of Christ. And the moment we start bringing feminism and all this funny, funny, funny stuff, we are interfering with God's image for us. Just like we are different, so you see the different characters of God. Let's not try to make the entire nation one tribe. The, the variety shows us the character of God. The different nationalities in the world shows us the colors of God. Amen. Amen. I know some people think God is their tribe than any other, but that's wrong. Amen. Amen. So, so God... He's the one. The Bible says he's, he looked at man. Uh, can I say this one? Yeah. I want to prove to you that God wants you to have somebody than anyone else. Do you want to hear that? Yeah. So, so God, let me start with this one. Because this will help you pray with confidence. Because some of you are praying with fear. Because the devil makes you feel like you don't deserve or God does not want you to have. I am I, I destroying and aborting that thought. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You're going to pray for your future with purpose and with confidence. Amen. And Carol is going to share this part about uh, purpose. Because God is going to bring you for the sake of purpose. Amen. And are you understanding? Oh, yes. Now, God created a place for Adam called Eden. And you know the revelation of Eden, it is the presence of God. 
So, so one of the areas was to living in the, in the presence of God. So Eden has been created, and Eden contains gold, diamonds, everything. There is four rivers flowing to through Eden. There is precious stones, there is metal. Why? Because God knew the creativity I've put in, in man, one day he will be tired of walking. And he's going to come up with a car. I put the metal there. So the car was put on the ground because God will never give you a finished product. Okay, okay. We're still talking about relationship. Because this is where so many sisters start tripping. Carol, you will give me permission to share this. All right? Because so many sisters have been telling brothers, you need to be like Anderson. Or you need to be like Pastor Isaac. Few may say Pastor Gilenji because of age. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Unless it's a lady who is also tripping. Amen? <laughs> Only because of age difference. But I, I want you to understand this. Amen? Amen? Don't do that to your man. That's wrong. Or don't do that to the person God will bring you. Because there's some ladies who cannot hear God because they have already gone to God with a, with a decision. God does not answer those kind of prayers. You don't go to God to stamp on your decision. He does not do that. You go to God to tell you his decision. So, so many of you pray when it's too late. You pray after you find someone. You're supposed to pray before you find someone. So that when somebody starts hitting on you, uh, before, before men propose, they propose, they give you a million mini proposals. <laughs> I That's a proposal. Some, some of the ladies here are getting a light bulb. Because men are extremely scared of rejection. So they will keep testing. Unless in Kimutuakida experience, they will say, you know, 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 Asking you questions. So, so, so with those mini proposals, praise the Lord. When you hear, when you start noticing, who is a Adarusha to me, shine to door to door. I don't think you do get a look at that. In the same way, we pray. Go and ask God. God, what is this? In the bedding video, I can't. Who is this? Who is this? What is this? Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh God. Don't you know, brother, I kid it. They don't take care of anything in their lives. Brothers from today, we had a topic here we wanted to uh, we had some segment. I wanted to talk to men and I wanted to talk to the ladies. I don't know if you can do that because of time, but it's really tough. One of the things we would have told you is was a man. But no men will pay the match. I declare it in the name of Jesus. And I seal it. Before before pen the sister, pen the man. These sisters, you know that? Some men of Mezoya, or you can up and pan a stink, okay, one hour, you don't smell the stink. So some men don't even smell themselves. So I propose na na the lady I can propose. I propose that the lady need cologne. My proposal back to you, Nicole. You understand what I'm saying? So, I know the first thing you bend them up before, before the other things. Praise the Lord. So, man was there. Everything, and this is very important because I told you gold was put where? Ah, so, walk, walk with me so that we do it quick. On the ground, because God knew one day. This man will desire a car, a plane, all of those materials. The Bible is very clear. Where God put man, 
the raw materials were there. Yeah. But God will never give you a book, he will give you a tree. We all know that. Mm-hmm. He won't give you a table, he will give you a tree. Mm-hmm. What you do with that tree is your business. Mm-hmm. You, you understand? Yeah. You can use it to design a plow, you can use, use it to design a weapon. Some of you can design a, a hole, uh, and you can use it to, to plow with it or something like that. The same thing works even for marriage. God will not give you a finished product. That's why so many sisters here cannot locate the brother. Because they are looking. The picture they are comparing it with are either products that have already covered much ground in preparation, like Pastor Isaac, Anderson, and the others we don't know. For some ladies even have seven pictures. That's why they cannot locate the brother. But the brother you are going to find he is not going to be prepared like God has prepared together with working together with the Lord, with this Trinity. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. The Lord, the Lord, it's not an Illuminati sign. I'm just, it's the Trinity. Amen. 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 People don't like this. Especially the ladies. There's no amen. Amen. I'm not just in the best two people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let me tell you, God will not give you a finished product. And let me tell you, if you if you attract a finished product, completely finished, uh, it may not be that stay. It may have challenges. Yeah, because somebody has the bragging rights of being a coworker with God to prepare that finished product. So there's a high chance you may not you may be actually a married man, but you discover that after five years of living together. You know we have a lot of those nowadays. Yeah. A guy gets married to a church girl. You understand? Yeah. Then you're wondering why this guy is perfect. Because somebody worked with God to perfect him. My friend here, Anastasia, he has worked with God to prepare more. So if all of you see more walking here, the ladies will be like, hey, is that just a very you know? <laughs> no, I'm not going to Praise the Lord. Amen. I know that it is you don't have the courage or the grace to say amen. amen. But God will not give you a finished product. Amen. But how come you were saying yes and amen to gold? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm saying something very important. Uh, let me give you some piece of advice. When it comes to marriage, there's something, the next stage after God's will is something called quoting right. Say quoting right. Quoting right. Now quoting right and that is another, it's a fancy word of, it's the right word of, of dating right. Now dating right is the process where we know it's God's will, she knows it for sure, I know it for sure, let's get to work. Some of you, this is how you interpret God's will. I know it's God's will, she knows it's God's will, let's have fun. Zero, you're missing it. You know it's God's will, I know it's God's will, let's get to work. Why? Because now I'm coming to your life as a huge stem of wood. Nimti Mekato is a track of wood. And you are a track of wood. We, I'm going to work with God to shape out of you my dream wife. And you're going to work with God to come out of me your dream husband. So this will take a bit of a journey. Now, after five years of carol laboring, or the other ladies, that's why they're normally very few years. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's always those, let me call them insects, outside there, parasite, parasitos. You understand? <laughs> Who prefer that one? But what you don't know is that it's good to examine where Pastor Isaac was when they were meeting with Kathy. Where Anderson was when they were meeting with Carol. Where Pastor Dinango was when he was meeting with Stella. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You see the chain? Yeah. And you begin to understand that one was in a raw form. So even for you brothers, because you at least you are saying amen. Amen? Amen. amen. God is not going to give you. Stop going, saying I want a wife like Carol. No, 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 no. You yeah. understand? Yeah. You are going to get a girl and, and come out of her a wife. When I was married, Carol, she did not even know how to cook. I taught her how to cook. Uh, 
uh, Adam. Adam is there. Let me use you as Adam. Uh, so he is there in the garden. The gold is in, in there. Uh, he has everything he needs. Uh, have we established that he has everything he needs? Yeah. Now check this. Even God is there for him. Every day is visiting him. You, you, have, you, have, you have gotten that? Then the same God looks at him. He is there for him. He has gold, he has food, he has everything. He has even servants serving him. Because he was a king on earth. So a king needs servants, he had servants. There's a time I was teaching stuff, I was breaking it down that serpent was not necessarily snakes. They were servants to men and they knew the language of men. They had legs, they had hands. They were not ugly. After judgment, they changed their features. But that's kind of complex, we don't want to go there. But they were to, just like angels were serving God. Anyway, praise the Lord. Amen. So during the judgment, he was told you will no longer be able to walk. You will be able to crawl. Are you, are you understanding? Yeah. But, but ignore that. That's not that important. But here is man having everything. Did he have everything? Yeah. Then God looks at him, even though he's there for him, and he says it's not good for him to be alone. What God is telling us, even after God is even there for you, there's still an element of your life he recognizes you need a person. I was proving that point to you that God wants you to get somebody that you want for yourself. Because it is not man who told God, it is not man who told God that I want somebody. He was oblivious of even his need. It is God who discovered that he needs somebody. And he did not even ask the man for his permission. He put him to rest. Then build somebody for him. All right, we can share a piece. Then I come with close. Clap to Jesus if you go somewhere. So just to add on to that point, yes. uh, to add emphasis, it is God wants you to have, he's bringing someone your way for purpose. Oh. For purpose. Because for you, maybe when you're praying, you want somebody because you're thinking, eh, miyaka in a song, Valentine's. If, if only you had somebody. So your desires, your your friend, who are engaged, your friend, or you come as someone I am a post picture, and you are thinking, hey, will you not be called a machine that you will hear? And I thought I'd have to have a mutual missing. Mm-hmm. So competition mm-hmm. is driving you to get somebody, mm-hmm. but God wants you to get somebody okay. for the purpose of, for the for, for the reason of purpose. Wow. Because you see, God had a purpose for Adam. Mm-hmm. This and this and this. Mm-hmm. But now, as he was busy working, God and this who you to better fulfill the purpose that I have created him for. Yes, he needs. Somebody. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm. So stop worrying. Mm. And you know, go on a sleepless night. That will allow you see who is in your Somebody, 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 somebody. Una pata ni biri e mujala. Me angani kila mtu kwa kanisa. Unanza front row. Ni wewe ni wewe. Poko na yapi cha mental mental picture in your mind. Yes. And you can't sleep, you can't concentrate because you're thinking, oh, you need somebody. Mm-hmm. But you see, for Adam, he was busy. Yeah. yeah. He was busy serving yeah. God. Yes. He was busy in his in his own things. Mm-hmm. And in in your who busy, mm. God sorted him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Adam did not offer himself and told God, hey, mm. Oh Lord, I'm mm-hmm. offering myself to be put to sleep mm-hmm. so that you take a rib mm-hmm. and uh, make me sampled. Mm-hmm. Now, he was just busy, but God put him to sleep. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. So God is well able to sort you at the right time. Yeah. So trust him. Instead of worrying about where will somebody come from, seek God. You must worry, pray. Know, know your purpose. What is your purpose in God? What should I be doing at this particular time? Yes. We let this time, let God be dealing with your weaknesses. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. At least we not a perfect person, perfect nini nini, na we badu kona heart issues, mm. anger yes. issues. Yes. So many things that you need to deal with. Yeah. So instead of 
worry so much about the, this person. Mm -hmm. Allow God to allow God to work on you, to work on your heart, to prepare you. Mm -hmm. So that when the even when the person comes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. see tena utanza ku date for five years mm -hmm. because so many issues. Muna mm. call every day. Mm. So muna date leo two weeks. Muna mm. break up two months. Mm. But you see that time when you are there praying and asking God, oh, where is my person? Where is my person? You could have worked on your heart. Yeah. You could have worked on those weaknesses. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah, but God, you see how that part that God wants you to have somebody yes. more than you you yes. even want. Mm. So trust Him. Uh, and it's uh, something Carol was uh, sharing. I wanted you to mention something. Uh, it's not your. Okay. Mm. So, and, and something else that I will relate to seek first the kingdom of God. Mm. I remember sometime back somebody was telling me that, that for me I was lucky because mm. I got married early. Mm. And uh, for me, I was like that, that season of praying and seeking God, mm. and bring a person, seek one of your pressure. Mm. Where, will, where, where will my person come from? Yeah. And I was like, you, yes, it is true, mm. but also when you look at it from that perspective, mm. you, can, you can even mislead yourself. Mm. Because at that time when, when uh, before I got married, that yeah. time, mm. I was really seeking God. That's at that time, I, I, I wanted just God and nothing else. Mm. When I was praying and going to Keshans and spending time with God, mm. it was not for actually because I wanted a, a husband, a mati, mm. and a kanisa, mm. pastor or single. For me, I just wanted God. I wanted God. Yes. I just wanted God. Yeah. I, I, the point I was in my life, I was. I just knew that if God does not come into my life, mm. my child would end up here. Let me interject. Uh, the first thing, you have heard me say this, and this is absolutely true. Uh, I, at start, I never fell in love with Carol. I fell in respect with her first. Because I was wowed. It, I think it was like a Rebecca thing. You remember Rebecca in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Because uh, she was, I remember all the people that I was mentoring, in my heart she was the most respected person that I had respected. As much as she was my daughter, because she, her hunger for God inspired me myself. Praise the Lord. I remember there was even a time I was praying for her. It just takes, took some time, some time to pray for her. And she didn't know I did this. And I was praying for her. I think I told you I did this. I was praying for her uh, to, to get a very good husband. I was praying for her to get the will of God, period. And I was praying for her that way because I was like, this is she's so dedicated to God, so sacrificial, I don't want her to be messed up. And I was like, I pray the guy can let her atakua the will of God. <laughs> I'm very serious. And I would even sometimes hint for her, are you, are you praying? And she was like, yeah, marriage, me, me, dad, okay. And I was like, okay, you need to when, whenever God speaks to you, let me know. And I had no idea I was the subject. <laughs> the subject matter. I respected that. Do you know why? Because that time, she used to work in a... She's an, this lady is an extremely hardworking person. If you knew her life as ladies, you'd be so inspired. And I'm not saying this with any grain of doubt or trying to flatter her. She knows I don't flatter her. I give her reality. Flattery is not encouraging the Bible, but brothers, you need to know a bit of flattery. See, when I could propose, come on, I'm going to just. You have a You know, that accent. Take us accent. You're busy, you don't know how to be a baby. Okay, I'm busy. Talk like a human being. Anyway. I'm going to give you bees. Don't give you more bees than any other letter. What a good job. Talk well. Anyway. <laughs> So let me tell you something. 
Praise the Lord. She used to work in a hotel. And this hotel she was working in, she used to report to work. She had to be at work at, uh, at six. She had not to wake up at six. If some of you know how hard working and how sacrificial this woman is, I, even when uh, she's talking here and I'm wondering, how am I? As I said, I was wondering, let me tell you what I was thinking. I was wondering, am I a good person? Because when you, you preach, knowing how hellish your week has been and how tired you are, and here you are with stilettos and looking powerful for the one of God, and we are preaching here. And I'm questioning. Look here after this, after out of Africa, and I'm going to buy you forever. Praise the Lord. I've changed the plans. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 no. I cannot do that. I'm by the way, my room is funny. Maybe you could walk us away. Like, if it's out of our problem, we can come out of your house, car. But then, I told her when we were dating, uh, in my house, also in my house, I have a garden, kitchen garden. I just leave my apple. I don't want you to do any salimia to not do a spark, you know? I don't want Hands, there's nothing wrong. Just, just use carrot juice. Carrot juice and put your hands there time to time. It softens the hands skin. Yeah? Uh, do that sometimes. Praise the Lord. I don't allow because I told her, because there's a mother who was telling me, that's hard as for Ipata Koko Sutaeka, my one banana, I'm a baby behind you. I never will you ever find that, my baby, never a grass. I think of his hand. I said, no. And those women from my church were mean to me. They were like, hey, because I said it's sour. Not my wife. You understand what I'm saying? Because you find women who have a concave back. And I said, I'm going to go for 40. At 40. I can tell. It is men who have done that to their wives. Okay, I know there's men here who their vision is to have 16 cows and only one woman to take your them. That is immoral, but if it's your vision, it's okay. You understand what I'm saying? For me, there's certain things I don't want her to do. No, I don't want her. That's why I'm helping her grow the best way I can. And she's growing faster than I can help her. And she has grown so far in seven years of marriage. Now she makes money by thinking. She gets paid to think. But that's good. I'm proud of that. And that's why if I go to, uh, I get invited to a business girl, I will be happy to take her. There's so many ladies here who have asked me these questions. Why don't Christian men take their wives to events in their workplace? Look at the women. You know <laughs> they are not present to the apple. But men, they will just spiritualize the whole thing. If you want to be taken to that event, uh, make sure you're not concave. You know? <laughs> no, no. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. the glory of men is your wife. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be a blessing. See, una kibizana, imagine Perez, ukiwata wangige, then una unona ladies, nikama bees. Lakini wa shindo, wana kibizana nini yako, then una discover, kuna jama na simama, na zama, tempo, 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 tempo. Sasa, unona mama hapa. Are you understanding? How much glory do you think God will get? How will you feel? What are you feeling? Where, where? It's the sun. How will you feel? And I keep that. Nazikina and easy. Elastic plants. What are you doing? So, so you must be able to take care of her. Because for me, I don't see her as separate. 
She's an extension of me. So if she's hurting, I'm hurting. If she's if you attack her, you're attacking me. Yeah. Hey, come on now. That's why I can go gangsta on you. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So there's certain things, and by the way, I take her even beyond me. That's why for me, ni me lima kwa yosha namba. Hakini ya Are you understanding? Such a healthy lima. So we are working, 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 we are but the kind of hard work that I want her to have, and that it was clear when we were dating, was about purpose, was about like, I'm happy she loves her children, she loves ministry, she loves uh, growing her business, she, uh, she's busy be flowing within the element of her purpose. And, if, and even if it drains her, it still gives her strength, because it's purpose. The reason, even if this will get us tired, we will go home fulfilled, yet tired. Because we were within our purpose. We were not wasting time. Yeah. Are, you, are you getting the sense? So, so we are not scared of being tired. The question is, what is making us tired? Does it have purpose? So this lady, you know what she did? She used to get to work at six. How many days a week? Monday to Saturday. Gets to work at six. What time did you used to leave to work? Nine earliest. And I took at nine earliest, now six and a quarter. So, meaning I want to look for that. I want you to get this. Because you see, so many people behave, and those people who utter, like that example I've given us, is people who do not understand that there is always the story you don't know. You know, some people think so you're so lucky, this are happening for you. No, you have no idea. Overnight success takes 10 years. There's somebody who was uh, saying somewhere that, uh, hey, wait, wait, you guys, uh, you, you, you succeeded all of a sudden. I would like to know, it is very suspicious, how you landed to your millions. And uh, I'm like, uh, okay, listen. <laughs> the story is back to you, you do not know us. You have no idea what you have been doing in darkness, behind the dark. The story you ignore is the real story. Not the one you see. You have no idea the price behind. The sacrifice. The saying no to today's gratification. So that our tomorrow can be different. Sacrificing who I am now for who I will become. Those are our principles. That's what we have been doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's something Carol is doing. No matter how tired she is and her week was hellish. You understand what I'm saying? After we arrive home today in the evening. This some assignment should be working on. Unbelievable. And I'm telling you, by the time we are sleeping, all of you will have snored. The big one. The one that looks for more snow. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that one, that will be you. You understand? Now I know today you are like, it's special Sunday and you may wake up. And wake up and The next time we'll have this, it may be a year. Or a few more months. There's serious work to be done. We don't have the, the luxury. We must work when it's still there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So she used to be there. So she used to wake up at? For that. But what time is she sleeping? Anyone? I'm a dog at the earliest nine. Walk, 30 minutes walk from where she's to the stage. Then, when I do this, I'm going to one hour minimum. One hour to jail, as a place one hour to Vika. You understand? So she's arriving home and she used to pass by through a forest. The time we were dating, one time I didn't appear. I didn't even reach her home. I mean, I'm here. 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 Okay, I'm here. I have only one question. I don't know if you reach her home. So I did what any intelligent man did. I'm, I'm not going to be a coward, not to take my wife home safely, I, and I'm also not stupid to endanger myself. So I called the no and began to pay him. Told him uh, every time you come and pick my sweetheart, una mwokisha, una So I used to pay him. So I was like, I'm brave enough 
Et toi, ici, n'a pas assez de temps. Non, si tu es là, c'est ici pour se déguiser. Mais moi, je vais te déguiser. The Lord drew all those hardships. The Lord did not raise a full load of me. Raise a load. Because I have a brother, Joshua, in the army. I have a brother. Come and talk a whole room. I'm talking to Shaho. I'm talking to Tasha. Oh, Tasha, I give a man a moon. Jama Kuta. Transita and Luzo are going to collect. Uruma, Uruma, the Tanakas I got. Mungu kuwa na Uruma. You know what I'm saying? Kana nyongo, kana jina ya kipukoneza si. In the name of love. Naza kwa dika tu atiko. Just like, uja mali jua leto na. Na yuko leto azi. The guy who killed himself for love. Hey, just like Romeo. I mean, the portraits are seen because of me. What a pussy, you know that? Especially if you're dating a girl at a book and you're talking about one in the night. Go back to prayer. Yeah, and come on, especially come on, okay, Joe. Muko, one, muko, bado, bado, jala, mnaongea. I have a story. One in the night. That is your cue to run. You know what I'm saying? It's very questionable. You go to the Zeon, I'm a Zoya, he's a son. That's a story for this meeting. Praise the Lord! Some ladies want to attend. Yeah, you can attend with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So imagine she used to get there that late. So an Africa home around 11, 12. It was crazy. She, that is the time where she has to divide between washing her clothes, preparing for the following day, eating something. Then, no sooner she has slept, She's up at four thirty, and she used to work even on Saturdays. And guess what? She told me she made a decision a way later when she was uh, younger that she must go to all those cashiers because it's a battle of her life. She has to see God. There's no single cashier she missed. There's people here who came for those cashiers used to sleep through the cashier. I don't even know why they came. Because I was drinking a cash on the day, I was like, when you buy, you buy one and you go now. So that, I want to take a high car. I want to be quite pretty. But for us, I remember, I don't remember ever seeing her sleep. She was always writing notes. She was always, we, we have those notes. She was showing me the other day, the notes that I taught that time. And she did this for straight four years. She only missed, I think, one or twice. And that time she had gone to Kisumu for a funeral. And the other time she was on, I think, a weekend challenge. Four years straight. Mbaka nika mgurumia, nika mbaka nika mgurudingi home, uchange, nika mnulia karai. Ayuwa na wea cho. Na sisi cho designer, ni the indigenous one. The one who told her, her karigo. You know what I'm saying? The indigenous one. Praise the Lord. Even the Lord now again. Imagine such sacrifices. Then there was a lady who felt I when he had the nani kagogo ikabucho. No wonder I could see what that was. Yeah, praise the Lord. The guys are going to pack it. That's why we are going to your skin. The Lord now again pack it. He will go and wash the church. I'm I'm not kidding. And I know some of you like a career summer. And it's a foundation. But what do you use for your skin? Yeah, that's what she uses for your skin. And I'm going to play your bucket. It's a joke, it's a joke. There's nothing wrong using cosmetics. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you understanding? I fell in respect with her. And let me tell you, so so many ladies, have you ever seen a, a picture of uh, of this mountain or iceberg that is normally in the ocean? Then then on our ocean, the next picture ni what is under the ocean. Then on Andika, things are not always what they seem. So some people see this and they don't see under the kind of roots and weight that is carrying what you're seeing. Because people always, when people 
uh, fail in their discipline, they will reduce your discipline. Oh God, come on now. Come on now. When people fail in their discipline, they will reduce your discipline so that they can have an excuse. But we didn't get to here as an accident. There was an intentional, there was sacrifice. There was times where, we, because we started studying both of us, we are not lucky like some of you. For, for us, when we were marrying, we were both did not have diplomas. We accumulated our diplomas in marriage. And let me tell you, people, it is not funny. Uko hapa hivi na kitabu hapa. Kuna time kama alikuwa anasoma na yeye Kaila akachukua peti mzima. I'm saying it was not funny. So let's not run out and run out to pick a shot. Get back behind me, Kaila. You know? I'm saying it is not funny. So some of you are so lucky. People like Brian, you started. I was telling him that when we were canceling them. Telling them, you guys are starting life in an upper hand. And I was challenging them, I make a million, you make ten. If you make nine million, you have failed. <laughs> Why? Because you're starting life in an upper hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, you, you, you guys are graduates. Most of you have so much going on for you. You have Anderson to help you, I had nobody. Nani? Praise the Lord. For us, when we were planning the wedding, people would come and tell me, Mimi, it's because I did know the aspect. So now she knows, you can say it for You didn't even have to tell me, you know? You know what I'm saying? But it was not funny. <laughs> the least people did. <laughs> no idea. You understand what I'm saying? Anastasia was there, you remember? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I praise the Lord. Yeah. So it's important. It's important. You guys, you have support. You have so much going on for you. So ladies, do not underestimate Carol. She was not busy praying for asthma. From the background she went through, the pain she went through, she was not even interested. It is so funny. God gives people things that they are not interested in. I used to ask God. I used to take names to God to tell him, God, is you call this one. Because me, I, I never wanted to do the ministry. Even to this day, I've never assembled the courage to call myself pastor. Nada. When to bethe we kuja kutakuta Anderson ukiita pastor, watu watapapia hakuna mfuka weo. In my neighborhood, it's in your well. They know me a sergeant, they know me, they have, there's very weird names they know me. Not pastor. Because I'm not, even today I'm not, it's been 17 years of ministry, I've not had made peace with it. And I don't want that new. Call me CEO who's prayer. A CEO who cast out demons. I prefer that. Because I'm, I'm not interested. But I have seen people compete with me who are on fire. Who feel that they have double double prophecies. Praise the Lord. I'm like, okay. so I have gone to go to please give it to them. But God is very interesting. He told me one time, one of the resources I give people, things they are not ready for, is because the ones who are not ready for them will not be destroyed by those things. Because the fire, the fire of wanting something makes your motive wrong. That's why ladies, when you do not want to be married, you don't want a husband, is when God speaks to you. But if you come to this case and you're like, somebody, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me. You understand what I'm saying? You will create your own hearing and you will think you have heard. So what Carol is saying is what she did. You understand? Get busy with what God has called you to do or the, the available opportunity. Serve God. Serve God. Even the people that are mentoring right now who are about to be married, I have noticed something consistent with them. They were not interested. They were just busy with God. Can I give you a scripture? Uh, Gloria, one of you. Why is Kevin? Um, okay, okay, I want scribes. Just give me the scripture. It says, And Satan start up the devil, uh, start up David to number the men of Israel. Give me that scripture. 
We don't have the time to read the whole story. But the Bible says Satan. Can you say Satan? Yeah. Start up David imagine. So I want you to understand when you just want to, I want somebody, I want somebody, and you do not want to hear anything else other than you want somebody next to you. That is a demonic star. So I want to prove to you that the devil can start up. It is not a thought that start him up. It's not a prophet. It is Satan start him up. And by the way, what he was about to do was not a bad thing. Because later you will find God telling his leaders to number the army. You remember he told Gideon? Ah, come on now. Yeah. You see how, how interesting the things of God are? On one side, because it was a good thing. But let me tell you what it was. It was iniquity. Let me define what it, iniquity is different with sin. <laughs> but iniquity will take the people of God to hell. And sin will take the people of the world to hell. Sin is when you have refused Jesus to become your Lord and Savior and to forgive you your sin. Iniquity is being part of something, is being part of something, doing something that God is not a part of. That's the meaning of iniquity. Iniquity is doing something God is not a part of. He's not part of it. So when you grow to the level of sonship and a daughter, of God, there is certain expectations that God has for you. That to a sinner or to another person, it is not sin. But for you, who know what should be done and you don't do it, it is considered sin. That's what the Bible says, that for those who know what to do and they don't do it, it is sin. Come on now. Thank you, darling. First Chronicles 21, verse 1. Let me read it. It says, Satan! Who? Satan. I, I, I never want you ever to forget this verse. Not just in your marriage, but even in everything you do. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take census of Israel. Very interesting. Because the first time I read it, I was like, what is so wrong? So the devil can incite you to be, uh, inciting means, praise the Lord, another word says, provoked. Amen. Another Praise the Lord. Are, are you listening to me? And incited. And, and another verse says, start. S-T-I. R. Start, David. As I close on this point, I want you to use this scripture in your life to realize that the devil can start you to do so many things that God is not a part of. Praise the Lord. He can start you. He can start you. So whatever you feel something, because God is God, God is, does not do that. Whatever you feel, stand up. Even in anger, in hate, in wickedness, the devil is not far. That that can start up. And by the way, con men use the same features. They don't give you time to think. Ah, we do this now. Then. School fees you read. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Ah, very interesting stuff. Are you understanding? Start up, start up, start up. So if the devil comes in, and, and right now you're here and you have a great startup to have somebody in your life, uh, take a, a back step. You start changing your, uh, change your prayer. The Bible says you have to pray with understanding. Begin to tell the devil, you know what? I just start to go to side. God, if I'm not ready, don't bring them. Because you, you know what? If you're not ready, you can bring, you can marry a judgment. Oh, praise the Lord. And if you have been hiding from the Lord, ah, this is this is the one from the Lord now. If you have been hiding from the Lord, there's certain things God is trying to pluck out of your life. The certain things God wants to do to your heart. Perhaps you can play a song that I pray. If you have been hiding from the Lord and you want to bypass the process and attain progress, you don't think you fool God. That guy that you'll get or that girl that you'll get because of your permissiveness, of your insisting, that will be the kitchen God was looking for. To work on you. 
Yeah, yeah, it's good when you're quiet because it means you're linking. The linking church will change the world. God will go like, exactly. Exactly. You thought you would hide from me? Like the, so, so what you can do now, the type of seeking God kind of talking about, and, and the one that I was also doing, because me, all these things that I teach that God gave me, I, I did not, God did not give me this revelation. I tell you, write these things down, because one day you'll be pastoring a church and they will need this word. No! I got this teaching because I was seeking God to change my own life and no business with other people. To be honest, I didn't care about other people. To be honest, I envied everybody else. I thought my life is the one that is in trouble. I was busy looking for anything to change my life and I noticed Kara was doing the same. Because I know her. She was coming from a background full of fire. Me too. And somehow, with the scripture, when I was reading the Bible, was never to go and teach. I know there's people here, they only read the Bible, write teachings, they even pray. I don't get the revelation they have. So that the day they preach, it will be like it's their origin. I'm so much in the spirit, by the way. It's dangerous. This hour is very dangerous now. Amen. You can repent, yeah. Praise the Lord. When the prophetic grace begins to flow, you repent. That's wisdom. When John Das was praying for people, there's a brother who did not repent. And he came there for progress. He was, <laughs> he was rebuked before a thousand people. And, and he said that is the one for And to go to the like, when the prophetic grace was, he repent. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know you sure what the topic If the Lord is working, and trying to correct certain things in your heart. So why are you seeking God? You're seeking Him for two things. How many? One of them is to know Him. Slow down, slow down. Something is with. To know Him. To know? All right. So you're seeking God too? Number two, you're seeking God so that He may co-work with you to remove every barrier that comes between you and him. Those are the two reasons why you're seeking God. That's the, that should be the principal reason why you come to care. Why you open your Bible in your secret room. Why you're writing what you're writing when you're in your room. I never knew all the things that I wrote in my diary. When God told me to start ministry and to start uh, what I started in uh, 2005, that God will ask me to, I will go to pray and God would extract a someone from what he gave me. And I'm like, you want me to teach this? And I thought it's for me. Then later on, it took many years for me to discover there is no someone God gives you for other people that is not first for you. If you preach sermons that you don't live, and let me just help ministers. If you ever try and stand and give testimonies that are fake, you preach sermons that are not true, and you exaggerate experiences, guess what? God will not be mocked. That what you have sown will demand of you to live the same. So expect a judgment from that what you have taught. I'm not kidding. If you come, for example, if you stand and teach about holiness and you don't live holy, that same word will come for you. And if you are not living holy, there's a chance you will end up being pregnant. Because the word has come back demanding assembly of the truth. So, so it's not a good thing to become a minister. It's a dangerous thing. Because you have to make sure what you're teaching, you're also living it. As some of you know what I'm saying. It will be demanded of you. Let me tell you, it's not a joke. And some people fall out of even faith. Because they started ministering things they don't live in. And because God is not mocked, whatever you plant, you shall. So the harvest will be demanded of you for what you're trying to sow. And if you're not living right, I cannot teach about holiness even in marriage, not committing adultery, not taking advantage of, you know what I'm saying? Without it being tested. 
these things will be tested on you. So if you are not living, don't, don't you dare. That's what the Bible says in the book just let not many of you be interested in this. Because the judgment, I didn't write that. Go write that. It says the whips will be mocked. Did you know in the Bible, after you die, there is no subject of whips. So these whips the Bible is talking about is here on earth. <laughs> there's not like, there's no book of Revelation that talks at you. There's a time where we uh, approach the throne of God. Some people will be taken care of and they will be weeping. No! Weeping is here. Let me give you a confirmation verse. Those he loves each instance. So make sure what you share, even not say that, coordinates with your lifestyle. Because it will be demanded back of you. And you better match with it. So if, why are you seeking God? Number one, to know God. Number two, to remove everything that comes between you and God. So if God has been trying to make you cultured, to remove certain weaknesses, to remove lies from you, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Those things you refuse, you try to bypass the process for progress, you will come back and eat you up. And that's a very serious subject. So marriage works. Marriage is fun, praise the Lord. But there's work to do it. And one of the reasons God brings people together is to sanctify each other. Is you're supposed to marry each other and Carol becomes holier. And she helps me become holier. Because the true will of God moves you, each other, closer to God, not far away. If you marry somebody you used to be very prayerful, now you're not even prayerful. It's a sign. It's a threat now. Mm -hmm. Everybody stand on your feet. Alright. We have some tea in my glasses. Before. So he's calling your life to order. And baby girl, if you want to shorten the time of waiting, young man, if you want to shorten your time of waiting, get go to God and ask him this question. What are you getting rid of my heart? I help you. Make it a bit faster. Because God is not mocked. There's a name God told Carol. God is not unfair. You find a lady who has been in church for 60 years. She has not been married. There's something she has done wrong. And I support her in that statement. There's opportunities they have denied. There's certain things God wanted to do. And I, I know a sister that had stayed for 40 something years before she was married. And he got married to a servant of God who I confirmed used to operate in the prophetic. Within two years, he had terrorized the man. The man used to wash her clothes. The man used to. And he was a man of God. That guy was a son of God. He was so terrorized. Finally, this young man ended up in divorce. So they separated. He, and he told me, I went to him and he was like, she was my wife. You know? And, and the conclusion was, to me and Carol was, no wonder God was not giving you somebody for all these 40 years. Because <laughs> you are not habitable. You have not allowed God to prepare you. Please, I'm asking you, if you're here, you're single, stop stop calling their names, stop, stop looking for who they are. Ask God to prepare you. If you're already in marriage, now this is a prophetic word for somebody. For those who are already in marriage, and there's a few here, and those even who are listening online, listen, this is what the Lord is saying, I can hear it in the spirit. Stop staring at your partner for the things they need to change. The Lord is saying, look at yourself. Look at yourself. When God has given me the scripture that says, do not worry about the lock, do not worry about the speck in your brother's eye, be worried about, don't be worried about the log in your eye. God is saying, whatever issue you're finding in your partner, you have greater issues yourself. And he's telling me to tell you, ask me about it, I'll show you. <laughs> That's a bit interesting. Ask me about it and I'll show you. Let me tell you, none of you have the ability to change anyone. But if you can change, if you can change, 
you will be able to inspire them to change also. Only God can change people. So all of us in this very sincere, sober moment, lift your hands to God and close your eyes. What, what are you, what, what is God trying to work on you? What is he trying to perfect? What does he want to remove from your heart? Because you see, I normally say, anyone who marks their own exam, they will always pass. Anyone who marks their own exam, they will always pass. If you want to shorten your time of waiting, the reason some of you God cannot trust you with a lady or a husband is because they can see you are a danger not only to yourself, but even to his servants. If he gives you a vessel that is for some, that is his, he can already see your heart. And the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? So take your heart to God and ask him a question. What are you trying to get rid of in my heart? Because heart issues are the real issues that cause people to remain in one place forever. The church in this nation is not moving because of heart issues. And that's why we are being doubted by the world. They are wondering, do, do these people really know God? Because they claim they know God, but they are like, the opposite. So Father, everybody begin to pray, even me. Lord, what is in my heart? The Bible says in the book of Psalms 26, Search me, O Lord. See if there is anything wrong in me. Come on, say that. Search me, search me, search me, search me, search me. Search me, Lord. This is a super moment. This is a very important prayer. Lord, what is it in my heart that I need to work on? Because some of the people, some of you are praying for friends, you're praying for divine connections, but they will come, you will hurt them. There's some people you have not met who are better than you, stronger than you. They will come to inspire you, you will start competing with them. And God is like, ah, why should I? You're not ready. You compete with people who are supposed to compliment you. Why should I bring this to you? Because you see, for God to grow you, He will bring you people who are better than you. But you have to be healed enough to say, and yeah, you're better than me, I'm going to learn from you, man. You're going to be broken enough, humble enough, to acknowledge that you can give me guidance, that you can instruct me, despite your age. Oh, Jesus. This is a very important moment. And I hear the Lord telling me, if people take this serious, it's going to protect so many of you from going through stuff. I can hear that in the spirit. The people who will ignore what I'm saying and the service of today, and I'm not used to giving prophetic warnings, the people who will ignore, and I'm not playing, I hear the Lord say, the people who will ignore the message of today, when others are reaping in harvest, you will be weeping. And even then, when you ask God a question, you will remind you of this day. So please let there be soberness, because God will not be mocked. Because God wants to prepare your heart, He wants to prepare your tongue, He wants to prepare your character. He has to always, He's a responsible Father. He has to prepare the ground before He plants. He has to develop order before He brings power. He cannot trust you with more if what He already has trusted you with is destroying you. He cannot trust you with the revelation if you are not truthful. He cannot trust, trust you to be led, to lead if you cannot be led. Nobody, there's nobody who will ever grow to the point where you overgrow guidance. It's impossible. If you ever overgrow guidance, what you're actually doing is growing wild, is growing in pride, is growing in. Lord, Lord, what did you have in mind when you were creating me? Am I matching the picture you have in your mind? Lord, this is my question. 60 more seconds. Talk to God, talk to God. This is a very important. If I did not hear God, I would not have kept you like this. 
I had God and I had Him clearly, and I know what I had. And I can't wait to finish this service so that I can get my own time to pray for me. Because this is not just a word for everybody, it's also for me. And I know, if I know God, I know He will never bring me a harvest that I'm not ready for. So it is my eternal responsibility to always watch that my habitable for God's glory and His presence. Or am I running wild? I lead you to a prayer which will give you insurance. Oh, pray. God, work on my heart. God, remove the feeling of thinking that I'm better than other people, other tribes. God, remove the feeling that I could know better. God, remove the feeling that I need somebody to marry, oh God, as a single person. For those who are single, Lord, And I have not washed my tongue, I have not washed my heart. I don't want you to bring people who are innocent and I break them into pieces. I don't want people, I don't want you to give me a wife and she start getting lost of esteem instead of big heels. I don't want you to give me a man and I start hurting your man. There's a lot of ladies who think that God will judge men because of hurting them and they don't think that God won't judge you for hurting men. If God has no feminism, all of you are the same. So if you believe he can hurt a man for hurting you, then he can also hurt you for hurting a man. So if you're not ready for a man, Lord, I do not want to bypass the process for progress. Help me crucify my flesh. Come on, talk to God, please. Please. I see, I see so much work that needs to be done in our hearts. I see it in the spirit. I say, please, please, this will determine your next season. This is risky. Because for some people it will be the year of glory and harvest. And some people it will be the year of weeping. Because of heart issues. Heart issues. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because that's where the issues of your life will come from. All of the issues. Issues with money. Issues with career. Issues with people. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. 20 more seconds. Because I don't want you to ignore this opportunity. Man. Penetrate deeper in prayer. Come on. Come on. Please. This is a very serious prayer. I would not have kept you if I did not hear from God. I know I know what I saw, I know what I heard. Even I have that I did not tell you, and I won't tell you. But I know to some of you there will be harvest, and to some of you there will be a bit of crushing. But God, I'm praying for them. I'm praying for you, Peter. I'm, I'm quoting the Bible, I'm not saying the name of a person. I'm praying for you, Peter, so that because I can see the devil desires to sift you like sun. So I pray for all the Peters, the female Peters, and the male Peters in this place. I pray for your hearts that the Lord may not may protect you, shield you, give you grace. I pray for hunger. You will not attract the anointing you despise. I pray for hunger and grace to see God. Some people will come to this altar and the altar we're moving to to seek God with purpose. And they will begin to experience transformation. So many of you have said, I don't want to be like my mom, but you've been doing everything like your mother. So many of you have been saying, I don't want to be like my dad, but you've been doing everything the same. You even, you even share their insults. I hear this in the spirit. You're so much like them, as much as you have been like yourself, you're delusional. I rebuke the spirit of delusionalness. But you've been doing exactly, and even have you have their tongue, you say things that they used to say. It is time for us to take ourselves to the altar and offer our lives a living sacrifice. And let the Lord burn everything that is not Him. 
Lift your hands. Time's up. Father, as tired as I am, Lord, I've kept your people longer than they should have been kept. Because I had what they did not hear, but I've shared it with you the most, the best that I can. And I know you, God, you're not a, you do not lead us into confusion. You're so kind that you will always let us what is coming. You will always let us know the GPS, the direction, and how you're moving. And you, you are also responsible. Just like me, I cannot give Kayla something she's not ready for. That's why I've not bought for her a cutlery set of knives. Because I know they are not a blessing at this point. At this point, they are not a blessing. Also, I know there are certain blessings you cannot give us because we are not ready for them. But Lord, there is a state of emergency in the kingdom of God because revival is at hand. There is souls that need to enter. But your people are standing at the door. They are neither entering. They are neither entering. Neither are they allowing anyone to enter. And for that we say we are sorry. When we come into you God. Bring all the wickedness of our hearts. And we are not here with pride. We lay down all our golden crowns. And this prayer is not the end. It is just the beginning of a journey we desire to take. Father, I don't want wickedness in my heart. I don't want to serve you like this. I want to serve you like crazy. Then I miss heaven. You know I have a covenant with you. And Lord, I'm asking you, Jesus, that you convict us of all our sins. The Holy Spirit, you will send to us upon victors of sin. Convict us, oh God, in our areas. There's some areas where you have spoken to us for too long that, that we are like a, we are like seared with a hot iron. But we're asking you, please give us a new heart. We don't want to, to, to be to you like the children of Israel who were stiff necked that you ended up allowing them only to exist so that they die. And you were not looking forward to them, but to the generation behind them. I don't want to be part of that. I want to be dependable. Whenever there's a need in the world, I want you to count me in as a man who can stand on the gap and handle a kingdom assignment. And I will not object to you or frustrate you for allowing heart issues to come between me and you. So I'm asking you, Lord, to call to correct me, to wash me, to purify me, and to change my prayer. Remove pride from our tongues. Because our prayers, we have prayed for too long that our prayers are full of pride. Purify our tongues, O oh God. Purify our tongues, O oh God. Make me holy. I cannot make myself holy. Make me pure, Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, as you lift your hands, say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, show me myself. Lifting your hands, say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, show me myself. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, Everybody say, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Show me. Show me. Myself. Myself. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. With your kindness. With your kindness. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Show me. Show me. Myself. Myself. Amen.
would like to invite Jesse uh, to come and continue. Let's clap for him. Uh, so please go ahead. 